Small towns used to be self-sustaining. They had every industry all around them to supply the people in their area. Now, if one disaster happens, the entire supply chain is killed and small towns or even large communities can't get their supplies or their food. The answer is not found in a boardroom. It's found right out here in rural America. So I went and sat down with a brilliant man by the name of Matt Cherney, a veterinarian in Wyoming. And I think our conversation will empower you with knowledge, the knowledge to make good financial voting decisions and also give you some weapons to understand and combat what's happening in our country that is affecting you right now, even though you may not notice it. Right, I, I was smelling Oh, the really good smell of the, of the real su fertilizer. Success, and right? they, they just put that on three days ago. It came out of the feedlot. It's, uh, it looks like almost pure compost. It, 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 you know, this is a kind of the whole thing of regeneration without having to come in here and spend $1,000 a ton on fertilizer when you can do it naturally. And, you know, that's, to me, that's what we're kind of missing in, in today's agriculture is the attempt to recreate what basically God did, and that's recycling nutrients. Yeah, I mean, we, we mine fertilizer, Yeah, and then pump it into the ground, and it's become enormously expensive as oh, well. Yeah. But if you have natural fertilizer, which is manure, for those of you who don't know, and you put natural fertilizer on there, and you got microbes in it, and all kinds of other things that the soil really benefits from. There's microbes in soil. Everything, everything. Everything There's has microbes, microbes in the air. Right, and so, a lot of the stuff we're doing for soil now is actually in farming, at least, is killing a lot of those microbes out of the soil. Well, how can you take something like glyophylate, which can be technically classified as an antibiotic? And, and that's a... Well, glyophylate, that's a Roundup. Well, that's Roundup. The okay. most commonly used yeah. um, you know, herbicide, herbicide out there. And it's, it's really an antibiotic by chemical nature in the way it was produced and uh, not expect to have some sort of soil um, issue, you know what I mean? Right, so you're basically what he's saying is you got microbials in the soil right? and antibiotics will kill microbials because right. that's what they're designed to do. So you're killing off the microbials which is making the soil less healthy, which makes your grass less healthy, which then makes everything else that you do less healthy. So environmentally, it's just not a sound long-term practice for sure. And, and, and that's one of the problems with feedlots. Most people that go into a feedlot, especially the big ones, they're pushing this feed just as fast as they can go. So they're using a material, which is an antibiotic, Thailand, to, to try to cut down on liver abscesses. Cattle that are just being fed a 90% grain ration, if they're not on Tylenol, rumensin, or something of that nature, they will get massive rumen abscess or liver abscesses that are too rich in mm -hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. And so the, the, there actually gets to be a microbial invasion of the liver, and they set up um, these abscesses, which are just growth colonies of pure microbe. And, and if it gets bad enough, they have to condemn the whole carcass. Okay. A lot of times they, they, where if the liver touches the, like the rib cow, you know, they'll trim all that out and they have to throw it away and throw away the liver. Um, so they feed, you know, this Thailand. Well, Thailand is a family member of the, um, the microbials, which right now kind of bothers me is a thing called medication or uh, off the truck. Uh, mass medication to prevent the calf from getting sick or or if it is sick from from getting worse and a lot of feed yards do that whether they need it or not well the trouble just is to, just to try to just because they're they're it's like uh it's an insurance policy against right respiratory it's disease. easy to do right and then right yeah. and and so that material most of it is either metabolized through the urine or the manure. And so where does it go? Right back on the soil. And so these big feed yards, in a way, can be pretty destructive too in, in, uh, in the handling of the manure. Now, some people say that composting and that sort of stuff will kind of detoxify um, that material coming out. Um, I don't know, I mean, it kind of depends on 
many factors, whether all of the manure got to be, you know, uh, handled in a composting situation, um, you know, where you have heat and you have turning and everything to make it right. So, I, I, you know, it, it just is a, a thing that, do we really need to do it? And, and the, the, the feedlot people are gonna go, yeah, we have to, are these abs? Well, maybe you should look at cutting down the ration so it's not so hot. Well, they even get them on grass, and that's true, they can at times. But um, in a way, I, I think if you look at the, the possibility and see they're wanting to maximize weight coming out of these the, yards. In a, the shortest amount of time. Right, but they also want them to marble if they can. And yet they'll do things like implant and and feed the beta agonists and everything, which would destroy marbling, but they still do it. And, oh, I see. And uh, well, and in, in, in so we have this system in America where where the your the profitability is not is only at the really really at the top, right? The the retail level and the and the packer level. So I mean the like the numbers from the feedlots are, they're losing $24 a head over the last 24 years, 20 years or something, which it cannot be the case where we wouldn't have any feedlots. What you have is you have massive companies that are billions and billions of dollars in profit at the top, the, like, like Tyson and Cargill and uh, JBS and Marfrig, those are the four companies that kind of control 85% of the business. And, and then Walmart and Albertsons and Kroger's and stuff at the top of that. In these two areas, they are trying to make more profit and they have enough power. So they don't want to raise the, they, they've kind of raised that price up to the retail or to the consumer as much as they can or, or they feel they can. So now to make more profit, they need to push down on the ranchers and the feedlots, which is, is the least path, path of least resistance, right? So we've created a system where these feedlots then need to feed the, or they, they think they need to feed them as fast as possible, pour the grain to them. And since they're, since that is really hard on the animal system, then you have to, then they try to give them all this medications and stuff and antibiotics before they even need it. Right. Now here's putting right. the feed typically, right. correct? The, the, the Thailand and Rumensin too. Now Rumensin they use as an anti-coccidiostat, which is a protozoal parasite that can cause tremendous damage that causes anemia and cattle can bleed to death and and so rumensin has put in the the rations for that um but then like the thailand is to prevent the liver abscesses and so i mean you know we've created these problems that mm -hmm. years ago excuse me we didn't have and you know sometimes the best way to the future is to look back and go, how did they do it back there that they didn't have this issue? That they weren't having the issue, yeah. And and I just attended the Academy of Veterinary Consultants meeting in conjunction with uh, the uh, fifth year or whatever, every five years, this group um, on um, bovine respiratory disease gives their report. And it was at Denver. And essentially, in the last five years, we have better antibiotics, we have better vaccines, We've got more sick cattle and more cattle dying in the feed yard. Right. It's not working. So obviously, better vaccines and better antibiotics is not the answer to the problem. The problem no. is deeper than the that. The problem is somewhere else. And so if you if you look at this a different way, if you go back, you know, 40 years, well, I guess it'd be 50 years now, we had a different system, right? You have more, um, you well, had a whole bunch more outlets Right. Except for just one or two companies right. controlling everything. Right. So you had feedlots spread out everywhere. Smaller feedlots right. that did things a little differently. And, and smaller packers. Smaller packers. A lot of them. Smaller retailers. Yeah. And they were all more regional and right. local. Right, right. So you, you didn't have this concentrated system where you're trying to force it through and squeeze every last dime out of it at that point, right? Mm-hmm. And, and there's several problems to that. If I, I see a, any kind of world disaster economic or or uh, let's say even catastrophic as far as weather concerned the way our syst food system has worked out now on top of all this health stuff you're gonna you're gonna have a massive food shortage if you shut down one of these food chains which is controlling you know 25 percent of the food that goes to the united states instead of all regional and local 
Well, here's the question we got to ask. When I was a kid, and again, I was born in 1954, and so, you know, I grew up around Sheridan, Wyoming. And in 1960 or so, Sheridan, Wyoming had a creamery, right. which means we had small dairies supplying it. We had the flour mill. We had um, mm -hmm. Sheridan Meat Company. Which is, which is grain, which is like yeah. wheat and stuff. Going well, to make... Milk. Right, to, right. to actually become flour, local yep. consumption. Um, and we had, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the last, well, we had Sheridan Meat Company, which was a federally inspected meat plant. Okay. Oh, and we had Holly Sugar. So we were a cell, and then we had Acme Power Plant. We were a totally self-contained community. This was is 18,000 people now. Yeah. Right? So it was probably a little smaller then. Yeah, we were probably around 12. Yeah. And you had all of those industries it, yes. right there. Yes. Yeah. To totally. It, it didn't matter what happened in Chicago. Sheridan was fine. Exactly. So why have we given that up? That's the question we got asked. Why have Americans really given up their freedom to create these things that are... And like you said, if something happens, Sheridan can only last about six days now. Right. And they're going to be out of food. Here. Yeah. Right. There's, you, there's nowhere to go for If you have, you got, you might have grain, but there's nowhere to make it into flour. Well, we don't even have grain anymore because, you know. Well, right. It's all shipped away immediately. Yeah. Right. But, but this community used to have some grain production, small grain. But because there was no, those things are all gone, all, you know, yeah. the, they they quit. And the elevators are gone. Yeah, they 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 don't. If they if they raise barley, it's to produce hay barley, the forage right. hay barley. Cut it for hay and feed it right. to cattle. Right, right. They or, don't. Or and sometimes like up north they have, you know, for Budweiser or something. Right. But they don't have a plant. They don't have nowhere to go with it. Right. So the farmer doesn't have anywhere to sell it except right. for, right to one of these big companies like Cargill. Yeah, if they're there they're picking grains. it up, yeah. like down here they wouldn't they, they wouldn't, wouldn't even mess with bother. us because there's not enough to, to gotcha. do anything. So anyway, we, we as a society have let that happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for what purpose? I still haven't figured that out because no matter what you do, let's, oh, we can, we can raise them cattle down them big yards a lot cheaper than you guys can. Right. But the issue is, okay, you got freight down there and then you got freight with the meat back. And you've got an over-concentration of animals that probably are in a place they shouldn't be, which then becomes an environmental nightmare if you have too much snow, rain, whatever. You know, that country can't handle it, so it gets in the rivers. and, yeah. and Disease. Yeah. I mean, when you concentrate literally 170,000 head in one spot. And they turn that over two and a half times a year. So he's like 170,000 head at a time, but yeah. that's... That's going 170,000 head are in there, out, and another set 170 yeah, basically. in and out. So that's 340,000 in one right. spot right. in a year. Right. So that's what we're talking about. Is it that doesn't make any sense? It, you're concentrating all the waste, right. all the, and if you're putting all these antibiotics and all this bad stuff that's coming out of them, you're concentrating all that in one spot too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I I I think it's in the name of efficiency. And, and here's what, this is the word I've heard a lot, is efficiency. And then I really thought, it took me about a month to figure out what efficiency actually means. See, these so, guys helped that train over. They pushed it up. This, this is the steepest, it doesn't look it, but this yeah. is the steepest grade on the Burlington Northern between here and Parkland. Really? Yeah, okay. so they, they need a lot of help getting over the hill because yeah. those trains, years ago, There'd be a hundred of them. Now there's 150, and uh, you know they're they're pulling a lot of weight through here. But so I, so just to finish my thought here, what I what I thought about is what efficiency actually means. If you think about it this way, is making sure that the most amount of dollars goes from the bottom of the of the supply chain all the way to the top without losing any in between. That's what it means. So. In a perfectly efficient system, these towns would die completely because all the money would be going directly to the top. Mm -hmm. So you have billions of dollars at the top in one person like Bezos or, mm -hmm. or the Walton family mm -hmm. or whatever. But you lose all that money that used to be lost in mm -hmm. an inefficient system here. Right. It's circulating. Exactly. All through this yeah. in the yeah. communities and the 
baseball fields and the farms yeah. and ranches and the the little stores and the mill and the schools and the schools that's yep. all gone because now we've created efficient systems right. that just sucks it right out of the community and and it's kind of funny i had an argument once with uh i think it was burt rutherford i don't know that you're very familiar with the uh well, they're kind of gone now. The the cattle publications like Beef Magazine. Okay. Um, they may be online, but um, we got kind of a piss and match on efficiency. And let's and the way I look at it, all right. Let's take let's say you. We, we've discussed that your your ultimate pyramid of things is prime. Right. Okay. And and right now we're producing now the the big boys will tell you we're producing more than that but they're reporting like on this comprehensive box beef cutout weekly that we're only producing about four percent prime so what's a comprehensive beef, box beef cutout so the box beef we've i've learned talked about before instead of dry aging which is i i believe a much healthier process which is hanging on the rail they cut it up immediately and put it in a bag and let it well, you're absolutely right about safety. If there's any E. coli in there, it's just going right, right in right there. In yeah, the but, but anyway, so the, 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 the comprehend. I don't know why they what? call it. I don't know why they call this thing. It's a report, it, and it may even be daily. But I only get it on my communication system weekly, and it's coming from uh, the United States Department of Agriculture, and it's a report on the week's kill. Another, okay, so how many cattle were went through the system? But they actually do it by loads of beef. And so there's like a total of 7,000 loads that are being reported on. Okay. And of which, you know, 3% are prime. And, and then there's like, uh, uh, they're, they're not breaking down be premium choice and choice. They lump that all together and then down to select. Okay. But... Um, so select is like the... It's it's not Main very good. The grocery store, a lot right, of grocery right, store right, stuff. Right, right, right. Doesn't have much marbling. And may not be labeled at all, in fact. It may not be labeled a bit, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so uh, it's the majority of the beef, it's the majority of the ground and all that stuff. But if we say to be ultimately, in my mind, efficient, we'd have 100% of these cattle reaching their highest quality. Right. But right. in reality, we're at three or four percent. Right. So somewhere we're, <laughs> yeah. we've got ninety six percent inefficiency. Exactly. If if that's what you're calling efficiency, yeah. Uh -huh. it, well, to me, it should be. Yeah. You, you, you know, you can't. Because you're turning, you you're taking grass, and you if you're if you can take three percent, basically you're taking the nutrients out of the ground and producing either a super high quality product or a low grade product. Right. With the same. With the grass. same nutrients, right. So more efficiency would be you'd turn all that into a high quality product. That's right? where the money is. Yeah. Now maybe the money will disappear if it gets to be more of it. That's an argument they make. To become a part of what I'm doing, to bring this message to everybody in America, make sure you join my community at lifeinthewest.com. I also think that if you enjoyed this video you just watched, you probably enjoy this next video right here. So make sure you click on that before you step away and go to lifeinthewest.com to join my community. Until next time, God bless.